has to help an asset of his that was in trouble. I risked my life for your country. Without your help, Vasily Siren is dead. Welcome back. The Russians have an asset operating inside the CIA. A mole operating right under my nose for years. I can give the agency this man's identity in exchange for my safety. I'm Sari Cohen with Hollywood First Look, and today is an extra special day for me because I am talking to one of my own personal favorites, Bob Balaban. It is so nice to meet you. Well, it's great to meet you too, Liz. Seeing you in this role is incredible to me. I, I'm curious, just what does it feel like stepping into this role? What is this like for you? It's really been interesting. I, I, I've done a, a bunch of guest appearances, but I haven't really done many series. Every time anybody's approached me, the, the, the few that I said yes to all fell apart before the pilot got made. So I really haven't done it very much. And when the Condor people called, I love the script. I thought the cast was amazing. It's a great idea. Uh, I thought it was just going to be one season. And then we did a season and then a year went by and then we did another season. I barely remembered who the people were after the first season, after the year went by. And it was it was really interesting for me. I enjoyed it. I liked the continuity of it, coming back to the same but different thing all the time. If they had had a third season, well, I can't say any, I, I don't want to do any spoiler alerts or anything like that. I don't know that there will be a, th a third season, but if they asked me to do it, I'd be I'd be thrilled to do it. I really want a third season. And if we can't get a third season, I want you to have your own spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> I want the deputy it's director funny. of the CIA to have his own spinoff. I would love to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> well, I had a bunch of years where I played evil government people. And then all of a sudden I played stupid, happy people. <laughs> and it's like, it kind of goes in clumps. So maybe there's a little more of the nasty CIA person left for a while. I'm curious how you approach each of those roles. Like, is it different for you approaching your role in Condor than it has been in the past? I approach everything just based on what's the script and and do I understand it? Do I relate to it enough to do it? Which is um, most of the time I do. But if I don't, I realize I just can't do it. Uh, and it's a little nerve wracking. I wish there were one thing that I, and they're not that different. Evil me is not that different from funny me. It's just slightly different. So it's not like I, you know, grow mustaches all the time and have funny wigs and do that, which I occasionally do, but not too much. But the, the simplest answer I could say is, I like doing things I've never done before. Out of all the roles you've done, is there one that sticks with you? Like, is there just, is there one that just stays in your heart that just feels like it's a piece of you? When I was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I, my, my buddy in the, in the movie was Francois Truffaut. So for eight months, I stood next to him because we were, because I played the part of his interpreter, even though I don't really speak very good French, but I lied my way into this thing, which you may, I don't know if it's, if you ever heard my, my little story about this, but I get a call from my agent who says, well, uh, Spielberg would like to meet you to be Francois Truffaut's interpreter. How's your French? I said, it's great. He said, great, meet with them. They'll ask you to say a few things. So I did. I met with them. Then they said, talk to us in French. And I said, il y avait beaucoup d'années depuis que j'ai parlé français. Si vous me donnez ce boulot, ce sera très difficile pour moi. It's been many years since I've spoken French. And if you give me this job, it will be very difficult for me. So they said, great, because nobody there spoke French. And then, and, I, and, and then we said goodbye. We talked a little bit. And they said, great, you'll do the part. And, and they said, we'll say one more thing. And I recited a poem about the ant and the grasshopper, which I had memorized in seventh grade. Uh, and I played down the rhyming because I thought they can't think I'm talking in rhyming couplets. It's not going to work. And they said, OK, deal is done. Let's go. Come on. We'll see you in a couple of months and wherever it was. Um, and then I rushed off to Berlitz so I could perfect my eighth grade French. I sort of sounded like I could speak French, but I really didn't know how to speak French. I love that story. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's so fitting for you, I feel like. That's just like, yes, that, that would happen well, to my element. Not yeah. too many people had the exact same story of that, but maybe yeah. they did. Can you tell us about the second season? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to give too many teasers away. Well, but you, you, yeah, you. If you once you start talking about many of these things, 
it's it does become a spoiler somewhat but the the, the shift of the second season is there a lot there's a lot more personal in it for everybody we we aren't all these monoliths with and who you don't know if we love anybody or if we're what our background is you learn a lot more about all of us adventurous things happen there's still running around and being dangerous and scary and a lot of that but it's much more on the personal side my character for example in one episode spent we spend about five minutes of me having my dream i had a dream <laughs> and this this is this is not something that would have happened in the first episode in the first season all right well you can watch the incredible bob balaban in season two of condor which is airing now on epics check it out i'm sari cohen i'll catch you next time i can kill you and make it look like an accident I'm tired of being in one's punching bag maybe you should stop putting your face where it doesn't belong <laughs>